Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2. In the previous episode I showed you guys how to set up the iSCSI LAN within DSM on your Synology NAS. During this episode on Windows I'm going to show you how to set up the iSCSI Initiator. So step 2 will be setting up the iSCSI Initiator and then step 3 will be us installing the Steam client to the NAS. Now, the main difference between a normal mapped network drive and an iSCSI drive is an iSCSI drive actually allows us to install the application directly to that drive, whereas on a mapped network drive, you won't be able to do that. Now, you will actually want to open the iSCSI initiator on Windows. An easy way to do this will be to press the Windows key and S on your keyboard and just simply type iSCSI. So once you click onto the iSCSI initiator and open it, it will ask you if you actually want to run this service if you've never run it before. Select yes in this menu and then once the initiator is actually open, if your server is already advertising or you've previously connected to it, it will actually show in the discovered targets tab. However, as we've not set one up before, then we want to choose the discovery tab and then what we're going to be choosing is discover portal so we can type in the IP address of the NAS in this case it's 192.168.0.20 and we'll leave the port as default now if you have actually set up chap authentication previously um, during step one then you will need to select the advanced tab here so this is basically this menu here and then you'll need to enable chap logon and type in the details now obviously I'm not using that so I'm going to cancel out of that menu and then choose OK. So then once that's done we're then just actually going to go back to the targets and then you'll see straight away it's actually got the target here status is inactive. So what we want to do here is choose connect and then what we're going to do here is allow this as normal. So in the advanced menu there's again the same bit we had earlier enable in the chat log on so you can do that here if you want to but we don't need to so we're just going to click on OK and then straight away you see we're actually connected so after we're connected the next few steps will be as if we've connected a physical drive to the computer you want to open file explorer and then just right click on this PC and then you want to choose manage and then under manage just choose disk management and then straight away you'll see it's actually popped up so disk 3 is basically the iSCSI drive and the main important bit to remember here is we're not using it as like a boot drive you want to choose GPT click on OK so if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see disk 3 here we've just got under the 100 gig that we've actually allocated so 99.88 and then all you need to do is right click and choose new simple volume and then we'll just go through the wizard of choosing next and then obviously we've got the drive size we want that to be maximum and then you choose whichever letter that you want to give it so i know nothing has the letter z so i'm just going to do that choose next and um, i'm going to set this as ntfs call the volume label uh, let's call it steam for now and you can leave all of the other options here default choose next you'll get a brief summary click finish and then this will actually initialize it. So depending on what size you actually choose, the formatting can take a little while to do. So once it's formatted, you'll see that it says it's healthy, it's primary partition. You can see the drive letter and the name that we gave it. So then if we go back here, you'll see straight away that the iSCSI has actually been connected. And there you have it. We're actually essentially finished here because from here you can then run on and install Steam directly to this directory and then try to run the games there from yourself but obviously and obviously we're here to prove a proof of concept to see if this actually works so we're going to move on to step three which is installing Steam to this particular drive so we've already done the simple volume and everything in the previous step so what we want to do now is go to the Steam website and then obviously you want to install the Steam clients you need to download that and then once it's finished downloading obviously you run through the normal steps which you guys would have done hopefully a few times over if not then obviously you can just follow what I'm doing on screen you want to hit browse and then after that choose Steam which is the name that we actually gave the iSCSI drive earlier and then from there you can call or create a folder name or just use the default directory but just for the purpose of this I'm going to create a folder called games just so I know if I go there later, that's what it is. So we'll hit install, let that run through, and then we'll actually run Steam. And this is basically gonna do a few updates, so I will speed up this process for you guys. 
So after typing in your details, Steam Guard will pop up because you are logging in from another device. Although you're still in the same network, you're no longer logging in from your gaming PC or wherever you normally log in from. So the next bit, and hopefully the, the proof of concept is we're gonna install two games. So we'll choose one where we can play online and we'll choose one that we can play locally. So we'll just choose a simple one first of all. So let's do Geometry Dash. We'll install that. We'll also choose Rocket League as these are uh, two games I've been recently playing uh, just in a bit of spare time but we now can try the the proof of concept to get the actual gameplay footage I'm gonna need to do a bit of adjust work and use open broadcast software so I can actually record the gameplay because the screen recorder I'm using at the moment can't pick up the game it'll just come up with a black screen so let's just see if we can actually get some footage for you guys Okay, well, <laughs> there you have it guys, we literally have proof of concept that playing a game across the network from a Synology NAS works without any trouble whatsoever. Um, yeah, I'm actually amazed by that, that's, that's actually pretty freaking awesome. Okay guys, so this is Rocket League, um, if you've never heard of it before, it's basically football but with rocket powered cars. Um, yeah, we're going to go straight into it and see if we can get an online game. Um, okay, so we can see players in the uh, online and in the playlist. Let's see if it can actually find something. <laughs> no freaking way. Um, okay, this just checks. So we've got one AI and a load of Sinet or PlayStation players, as you can see. Um... Brilliant, that's not the greatest start, but um, yeah, we're in with seven other players, six of them uh, being players and one being AI. Um, and so far, we're not getting any kind of sort of frame drops, we're not really seeing any form of lag. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, this is playing pretty sweet. Uh, right, let's have a look at the pings. So, oh, okay, so you can see other people's pings here. 224, 152, 536, and you'll see me with 52. And that's running from a Synology NAS across my network to my gaming PC. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to say, guys, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope. Uh, that we've all learned something from it, um, I know I have, and I am damn proud of what we've achieved. So, yeah, until next time guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.